I took a track from this to this using only free plugins. How does it stack up against my premium mastering plugins? Let's find out. Hey, it's Marcus from Holosuite. I'm a big subscriber of the idea that you don't need fancy plugins or fancy gear to make good sounding music. So today I've decided to put my money where my mouth is and I tried to remaster a track using only free plugins. Now I won't go into a lot of detail about the plugins that I've chosen today, but if you wanna know more about what I used and why I chose them, I've made a PDF that has all that information for you. Go check the link in the description to grab it. And while you're there, perhaps you'd like to check out my other free resources. So the track I chose to remaster is called Port of Gandia, which is from the Holospace EP by Tom Anthony. Available on all streaming services. The link is in the description below. Please go have a listen to the whole EP. It's absolutely fantastic. Let's have a listen to the original version. Now, I... When I analyzed this track, I thought that it felt like it was a little bit too kind of boxy and needed some more definition in the upper mids. Uh, so I focused a lot on kind of sucking out that mud and trying to give it like a kind of a crunchy, bit more texture in the top. So here's what I did for my original master. Here it's a little bit more balanced, a little bit cleaner in the mids, and a little bit more of that kind of crunchiness, those field recordings kind of popping out at the top there. So I'll go into the plugin chain that I used from my premium plugins later on because I think you're all here to hear how well the free plugin version stacks up against the premium plugin version. Okay, so once again, here's the original. Here's my first master of it. And here's the free plugin version of it. All right, let's go back to my first master. free one. So what do you think? It's pretty close, right? Uh, it's not exactly perfect. This one sounds a little bit thinner. So the original one's a bit warmer. If we go back and listen to just the mids. In some ways, I personally kind of like this one a little bit better. Uh, which is a very interesting and surprising result. I didn't expect to uh, actually kind of prefer it a little bit. I guess you're wondering, how did I do this? What plugins did I use? So let's go through the chain now. All right, so on the EQ side of things, the first thing that I chose was TDR Nova. So that's Tokyo Dawn Records, I think. And this is an absolutely fantastic EQ. Uh, it's about as close as you can get to maybe a FabFilter Pro Q3 without paying any money. Uh, it's limited by the fact that there are only four bands, um, but it's got a dynamic EQ, so you can do some compression in here. Uh, it's also got the ability to do mid-side, um, and I've done this on a couple of my instances here. Uh, I've done just the sides. Um, and you can see here, this is difference, which is the sides and sum is the, is the center here. Um, and you can see I've done a million instances of this. Mostly it's because uh, I've only got four bands. And so when I ran out of bands, I just kept adding more stuff. Um, so each one is getting me s s slightly closer to the, to the final version. And look, this isn't ideal because it's probably adding a little bit of latency and a little bit of extra phase shift every time. So it's obviously not perfect, but it's free. So I think for the most part, all of these are just doing the standard parametric EQ duty. So I might see if I've got any uh, compression on here. Okay, I've got a little bit of compression on the top here just to even out some of those piano hits. Now 
Next, I've got the PTEQX, which is a Pultec clone, and I use this for years in the past. This is barely doing anything. It's just adding a little bit of top end. So I'm boosting at 16 kilohertz. So if I... Okay, the next one that I've used is another TDR plugin, which is called the Slick EQ, which is uh, like a really basic three band EQ uh, that also has um, some very mild saturation in it. And I quite like this one actually. It is not doing a lot. It's just adding a little bit of top end. It's got the saturation on very, very gentle. Barely tell. Makes things sound like a teeny bit more open. I didn't mess around with this too much. I, as I'll explain in a second, I, I'm a bit scared of using free saturation plugins because some of them are really gnarly. So I had to be really careful with the saturation on this. So I went very gentle. For a little bit of extra oomph, I grabbed the. Thrill Seeker XTC Mark II, which is an exciter. Um, now this is pretty gentle, but you can really drive it if you want to. Um, I've only mixed it in like from here 20%, right? So it's just a little bit, but that's adding just a little bit of extra. It's adding just a little bit more airiness. I've also been pretty, like I pushed this all the way to the top. I pushed this all the way to the top but it's not doing a whole lot, which is kind of good. I like that it's that subtle because that's really good for mastering, right? Um, so I quite like this one. Um, I've also grabbed this one called the Ferric TDS Mark II, which is a tape emulator. And I've just used a little bit of saturation on here too. And this one I've dialed back a little bit on the mix knob you can see here. Um, so this just adds a little, little bit as well. I'm guessing a little bit of saturation is there as well, assuming what if the VU meter is not lying to me. So over onto the compression side, I've grabbed the TDR, yet another TDR, Kotelnikov. Um, I'm kind of cheating here. I've got the gentleman's edition, which is the paid version, but I'm not using any of the features from the paid version in this. Um, so this similar to the EQ, you can use this in stereo, mono, some difference, so side, mids, left, right. Um, so you can do this in an awesome uh, amount of different ways as well. Um, this one also includes a delta button, which is really fun. So you can actually hear what you what the compressor is doing. Um, this is a cool. So that's what it's pulling down. Um, this is super gentle. Um, it's got a low frequency relaxer, which basically means that it won't listen to the low frequencies below this cutoff point along this kind of curve, which means that if the bass was really heavy, it wouldn't start compressing the top really quickly. So this is a fantastic compressor. And like, I don't think I've actually used much of the Gentleman's Edition. I've been using the Free Edition for years, and this is fantastic. Um, and you really don't need to use a lot of this, particularly on ambient. Um, it's a really funky thing. For the limiter, I have gone with this one called Loud Max. I picked it because it's a very transparent limiter um, and it's got basically everything I need. Like because in ambient, we're barely touching the limiter. All you really need to do is get things up to the right level and catch peaks sometimes. And I can set my upper threshold, which I always put at negative one dB. And really, this is not doing anything, I don't think. Just touching it. That orange is the... Is... I blow this way. Yeah, so it's like just barely doing anything. Just catching the odd peak at the top. 
And I really drove this and it really, it really does sound fantastic. It is really, really transparent. I grabbed the free version of Ozone's uh, Imager, which is used for monitoring stereo width. Now, the annoying thing about this is that the paid version has this wonderful kind of line that tells you whether you're in phase or out of phase, but this is a little bit more nebulous to me. So this is just my personal kind of dumb, not understanding how this graph works, uh, but I couldn't use this a whole lot. Because I'm using Reaper, which is also a free door, talking about free mastering, um, I can also use their stereo width tools, which I ended up not touching, but They've got uh, a really good variety of tools here. They've got width boost, center boost, with balance, and with rotation. So a lot of these you don't want to mess with too much, but if things were sounding really phasey, um, you might be able to use these. And once again, you won't have to pay any money. Um, I think that in my case, I found it much easier to just do mid-side processing because that's basically the same thing. So if, for example, the bass is out is showing that it's really far out of uh, into the antiphase area, I can actually fix that by going over here, which is what I've done, and reducing the bass just in the sides, so just in the difference. It's functionally the same as narrowing the width using uh, the Ozone Imager paid plugin. And the last thing I'd add, one of the most important tools when you're mastering is some way to level match everything so that you don't hear the differences in volume and think that that means something is better, right? So if we're using plugins that are going to generally increase the volume of the track every time we add something new, and if we're not uh, balancing the volumes against our original version, we're going to assume that everything that we do sounds better because everything sounds louder. Uh, this is a really tricky one to do free. So I've chosen one called Magic, M-A-G-C by Melda Productions. It requires the original audio, the one that you're level matching against, be run as a sidechain. If you're using Reaper like I am, um, Reaper routing is kind of crazy. Uh, and I will uh, do a video on this later down the track if someone is interested in learning more about how to do this. But basically, it will listen to the original track using the sidechain, and then it will lower the volume of your master track to make sure that they sound the same. So if I turn this on, and then I now go to listen to the original. That's the original. So it's lowered the volume if I turn this up. So it's bringing the volume down to match the original one. So next, let's look at my premium mastering rig, the one that I use on most masters. So my EQ, I use FabFilter Pro Q3, Pulsar Massive, which is a emulation of the Manly Massive Passive Analog EQ, uh, the PuigTech PullTech clones, Split EQ, uh, I used Ozone's Match EQ because I was referencing against uh, John Hopkins track, his cover of Dawn Chorus. I used it just a tiny little bit. I've got 10% here, just to kind of bring it a little bit closer. Just a little tiny bit. This is Pro MB. This is the multi-band uh, compressor from FabFilter, just to even out the piano hits a little bit. Just at those climactic points. And of course the Katelnikov. And then I will move into my kind of gadgets. So here I've got the Gulfos, which is an adaptive EQ, which is doing just a tiny little bit. Got it set at like 10%. I just use this to get a little bit more air in my recordings. You can hear just a little bit at the top. And of course I've got my imager going, which I've done a little bit of work in the um, done a little bit of work on the width here. Uh, the clarity module which uh, is another adaptive EQ. And 
that's just to get a little bit more emphasis towards the top, like kind of bring out the texture of the piano hits. And my old friend, the exciter, which, oh, actually I'm not using it here. I'll turn that off. And then my limiter, which is the smart limit, which is also basically doing nothing. So as we noticed, there wasn't a lot of difference between my master that I did with the free plugins and the master that I did with the paid plugins. So what caused them to sound different? So the first one is probably just that I might need a little bit more ear training. So I had a little bit of difficulty around the mids, trying to match up the exact frequencies that I had emphasized in my first master. And I think a lot of that just has to do with the fact that I still need to do more work. Um, I think if I probably had a better ability to judge frequencies, I probably would have been able to pick it up easier. And I'd say some of that might come from laziness because I have such wonderful tools at my disposal sometimes. It's very easy to uh, just let it do the work rather than uh, doing it myself. Second, uh, the analog modeling EQs have slightly different characters to them because they're modeled after different kinds of EQs. Third, I'd say that the adaptive EQs that I use, Gull Foss and the ones in the Ozone Suite, are just better than anything I could do myself. And even though I'm using them in a very subtle way, they're just this kind of wonderful magic bullet. But having said that, I'm not suggesting we should all go out and buy them because they are quite expensive. And I don't think that they necessarily add a lot. They're like the last 5%. My point here, of course, is to try and prove that you can have a good sound using uh, free plugins. And so really it's, you know, if it's a 5% difference, I think that's pretty good compared, considering how many possibly thousands of dollars you might be saving by not actually buying those plugins. But overall, I'd say that this shows that you can do a fantastic master without having to pay any money. But this comes with a giant caveat, which is that I would say one of the main reasons why I managed to get my free plugin master so close to the premium plugin master is that I do have some ear training. My ears are trained and I'm in a treated room. So my ability to get a clear idea of what I'm hearing and know where to take that, those things are skills that I've developed over time and equipment that I've invested in. And these are much more important than any plugin free or paid. So if you are looking at trying to do your own masters, don't forget that those are the most important things to start with first before you think about spending any money on plugin. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check the link in the description for my $0 mastering rig PDF. And while you're down there, maybe you'd also like to click the like or the subscribe buttons. I'd really appreciate your support for the channel. And while we're on the topic of plugins, maybe you'd like to check out this video of my favorite EQ plugins for mastering. And until next week, keep making music. Cheers.